KiwiSaver, the best way to not spend your retirement nest egg. New Zealanders are living longer, and it's so important that they have their income living as long as they do. And it's a great way to save on a regular basis over a long period of time. But now... Average rent prices have hit a new unwanted record, jumping to $610 per week. The Trade Me figures reveal a concerning trend that puts even more pressure on families trying to make ends meet. And the National Party may be giving young people a lifeline. We're going to let people aged under 30 use their KiwiSaver balance to pay for their bond for uh, accommodation. It's just another example of the National Party raiding KiwiSaver all of the time. How can it do anything but drive greater inequality with regard to that wealth transfer from literal retirement savings into the pockets of landlords? But many students love it. It's a good idea. Yeah, I imagine it could be pretty helpful. Yeah, it would make a lot of sense. Kia ora, I'm Tom Kitchen, and today on The Detail, what should KiwiSaver actually be used for? Is letting people get bond money out of it the right thing to do? And should we be tinkering with it at all? This is what students think. You can't really buy a house at the moment, and if you were using your Kiva server to do that, you'd have to be saving for a long, long time. So I imagine if people could use it uh, sooner, it would be a bit more helpful. Is it pretty hard to save for a, to save for a bond? I guess it depends on your, your living situation beforehand. Um, if you have the privilege of living at home and, and not paying a lot of, of, of rent, I imagine you can save a bit of money. But uh, as studying, it's, when you study, it's a bit hard to like save you know, a few grand for a bond. It can be quite difficult and you kind of have to only do it over summer, which can be a bit of a drag. I mean, I feel like it's a good idea if it had limits. What do you mean limits? Like as in how many bonds you can take out within like a certain amount of time, you know? Otherwise, I feel like if you're moving around rentals, then you could kind of, I don't know, use all your KiwiSaver. One of the biggest reasons why people aren't able to afford like apartments and stuff is because they usually ask for rent. Like, I think it's like the first two weeks of rent and then like a $2,000 bond depending on the area you're living in. Or like, um, it's just depending on like the area as well as like the type of housing you're kind of having, whether it's like an apartment or like it's an actual house, studio. And like bond plus like the two first weeks of rent is also really expensive. So yeah, it would make a lot of sense. I think with the current market, I think it is a bit necessary. I think interest rates are too high at the moment, so I think being able to take out a few thousand is actually really helpful to some people, especially because I have first-hand heard and seen people say they have to leave the, where they live because they can't afford it anymore. If people have enough in their KiwiSaver, I guess that would be beneficial. Why is that? If they need a house, they need somewhere to live. There's an idea floating around at the moment that you can get some of it out for a bond if you needed it for, like, a rental. Yeah. Uh, would that help you? Yeah, they would. Why would that help you? Because so I don't have to take a loan. Do you have to uh, take a loan? Yeah, like, a, a like bond? it's my own money. Well, it would really help with expenses, right? I went to Auckland Uni the other day and just went round at lunchtime, talked to a whole lot of students. Every single one told me it was a good idea. What do you think of that? I mean, when I was a student, I would have said that was a good idea too. This is Francis Cook, the investments editor for Business Desk. When I was a student, I also signed up for overdrafts and credit cards and I was too busy focused on trying to get through today to think about tomorrow and that is why we need schemes like KiwiSaver to protect us from ourselves because those same people will also say I'm so stressed and worried about ever being able to get into my own home and KiwiSaver is the main way they're going to do that and if it's being tapped into for things like rental bonds and putting your money into someone else's asset you might never get into your own home. So, yeah, I, I would have said the same thing as a student, but that's because I was bad with money. <laughs> <laughs> what would you say now? Now, I mean, when I saw the push alert come up that this idea was even being considered, uh, I said some things that can't be repeated here in front of a microphone. It is one of the most financially irresponsible ideas I've heard suggested. It is attacking KiwiSaver at a time when it will have the biggest impact, where if you take out even just $800 from a KiwiSaver when you're young, when you're about 20, I looked at that on a compound interest calculator, and a conservative estimate of what that could cost you by the time you're 65 is 16800 Now, that is a super small estimate because, let's be honest, most people's bonds are more than that and a uh, growth KiwiSaver could make you more than that, but I don't want to be accused of scaremongering. It will just have a massive, massive impact because right at the beginning of your KiwiSaver, 
is when it has the most potential to earn money for you. That's when you need to leave it alone the most. But, I mean, yeah, you've got a struggling uni student. They're, they don't have a lot of money. I remember when I was a student, um, getting up to $1,000 of savings was a really hard thing for me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I could imagine these days it's pretty hard. So just to have that extra financial security of having a couple of grand in your Kiwi saver you can get out, you know, sounds like a solution. The problem is, is it is a solution and it is a problem for sure that... I mean, I look at people renting now and I thought it was hard when I was a student. I struggled when I was a student. Some of the places I lived, I look back and I'm just like, how did we make it through that? But the solution being proposed is something that is going to make inequality worse. It is going to make people who are already some of the most financially vulnerable worse off over time because they might not ever make that ground back up. But if you open up KiwiSaver for every problem then you have no retirement savings anymore and we have a looming crisis of poverty and retirement. It's already not great. It's looking like it's going to get worse. Some commentators have said it's the most financially irresponsible thing they've heard. Do you agree? Oh, that's extreme. (laughs) No, I don't think that at all. This is Mary Holm, a financial journalist who has written a column for the New Zealand Herald for two and a half decades. She also contributes to RNZ and literally wrote the book on KiwiSaver. Because it's bond money, then, and I understand it lasts till you're age 30, and so I assume that if you used it till then, that then the money would be coming back out of your bond and going back into KiwiSaver. You haven't earned returns on it in the meantime, and that's quite an interesting point. So, so you are missing out on the growth on that money, but it's not its not a big amount. This proposal is not stupid. It's not, because the money's going back into KiwiSaver, it, it, it's not lost forever. But nonetheless, I think, I mean, it does mean you will have a bit less retirement money and perhaps more importantly, it complicates KiwiSaver. You know, it's already quite a complicated creature. And that makes me worry that people don't really understand the basics of it and stop contributing. There's a lot of people in KiwiSaver, but they're not contributing and not making the most of the fund. And and the more complicated it gets, the more people are likely to just not really understand fully how it works and not bother with it. But the National Party have said that this might encourage people to get into KiwiSaver. We really want people joining KiwiSaver. As you're probably aware, a lot of people under 30 don't join it at the moment. We really want them to join it. Look, we, we'll, we'll never know. I'm sure it'll encourage some, but whether it's 20 or, you know, 20,000, who knows? So yeah. you're seeing good things and bad things about this. I mean, yes. if there was a scale of 1 to 10, 1 being, I don't think this is a good idea at all, and 10 being, this is the best idea in the world, yeah. where would you put it? About 3, really, 2 to 3. I'd I don't like seeing KiwiSaver messed with for the most part. Yeah. Mm. The the other issue is some people might not get their bond back. Like, yeah. I mean, some people get their bond back if it's clean and tidy, but landlords can make excuses. Yes. And data has shown that it, well, sometimes 20% of funds paid into tenancy services stays with the landlord. Really? Yes. Yeah. 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 So, that, so that's a really good point. So that's money coming out. And that's... The money that people put into KiwiSaver in their teens and 20s is such valuable money because that's it, it's incredible how much that money multiplies by the time you're 65. If you've got three or four decades of, of compounding returns on it, it's amazing. And so losing money in those early years, if it doesn't ever come back in again, is a real pity. Are there some changes you think that could make KiwiSaver a, a better scheme? Yeah, look, there's a couple that I like. These are changes that have actually been put up by the Retirement Commissioner. One of them was what people sometimes call a sidecar account, which is people normally put in, employees normally put 3% into KiwiSaver. You would be told really or they would if you were a new enrollee you would be putting in four percent instead and people who are currently in will be given the opportunity to put four percent in instead and that extra one percent goes into a little sidecar account that 
once it th- hits 3,000, it would stop. And the extra, if you continue to put the extra money in, it will go into your ordinary KiwiSaver. The point being that there'd be $3,000 there that you could use in emergencies a lot easier to get out than the current hardship withdrawals. It would, it would just be money there that people could access when, if they lose their job and haven't got any income coming in for a while or, or their car breaks down and they need a new car for work or those sort of situations. Ideally, it would be set up so it would be pretty easy for you to get that money out, not the way it is now. So it would just be a little, yes, emergency fund for people because a lot of people in New Zealand don't have one as becomes apparent when times get tough. Yeah, Could you use this emergency fund for, say, a trip overseas? Yeah, well, (laughs) it depends on what rules they make. The point is it shouldn't be too hard to get the money out. And so they might just say, look, that's a silly thing to do, but they wouldn't stop you. I don't know. We'd, we'd have to see what rules were made on that. But the idea would be to encourage people and say, look, you can... The thing is you feel so much more secure if you have got access to some money as, as life rolls around, you know, and you know that there is that little bit of extra cash you can easily get your hands on. So I would hope most people wouldn't do that too much. Even if they did, though, come to think of it, it would still be teaching people the power of just saving a little bit each pay to to get whatever, whether it be a new car or a holiday or a fantastic big party or whatever you want to do. Yeah. Oh, could you use that money for a bond? Well, yes, indeed. Yeah. Um, well, look, it depends how tight the rules are made, but I would like to see them quite loose. I'd just like people educated about how this is intended for emergency situations but you could say that 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 wouldn't be an emergency but that would be something that a young person that because it's hard for young people to put together a thousand dollars or whatever they need for you know it might only be 500 if it's in a big flat with a lot of bedrooms in it but but nonetheless quite hard for them to get that money together so that might be quite a legitimate use for that the sidecar money, yeah. So do you think that that is a more feasible option and people could potentially use that for their bond rather than the National Party's proposal? It's certainly more flexible. It, you know, it means that the money can be used for all these other things as well, not just not just bonds for the under 30s, yeah. yeah. Oh, any other ways you'd like to see KiwiSaver improved? Look, there's one other one that I really liked, and that was the idea of putting beneficiaries into KiwiSaver if they're not already in it, and for the government to put 3% of someone's benefit into this fund. Now, it would be over and above the current benefit. We're not taking money away from beneficiaries. They need every penny often. So if they're currently getting $100 a week, they would get $100 and then the government will put another $3 into a KiwiSaver account on with their name on it. They wouldn't personally be putting any money in. It would just be the government putting money in as long as they're on the benefit. And there are the advantages to that, are, there's quite a few, I think. It's, it, it means that if they were on a benefit for their whole life because perhaps they were, it was a health problem, they would then still be retiring with you know quite a few thousand dollars to supplement their New Zealand super but many people are not on the benefit all that long and then once they go off it they've got KiwiSaver set up and rolling along and they get a job and their money from their job you know the the contributions from them start coming in as well as the government's money but it means and the the, the government contribution the annual 521 government contribution they would be eligible for that and it's a really way of getting people who are currently not in the scheme into it i notice that national has said with its bond program that it yeah that it might pick up more more members well this would be another way to pick up People and and would be tend to be the lower income people and those are the ones that are getting left further and further behind. So, would I think it would really help them? And when the retirement commission crunched the numbers on it, it wasn't going to cost all that much money because three percent of benefits is not a lot.
The difference with those suggestions is that they strengthened KiwiSaver instead of raiding it. So the core function of what you use your KiwiSaver for now would stay the same. That 3% you put in, your 3% employer match, that wouldn't change. Maybe an extra 1%, which most people would not notice coming out of their pay packet each week. Now, okay, in an ideal world, we all do that savings account ourselves. I can tell you from the conversations that I have with people all the time is that people really, really struggle to do that automatically. The great thing about KiwiSaver is it's automatic. It does that for you. So I think if we were going to add on a small percentage to sidecar savings, that could be a good thing. But like I say, the reason that works is that it doesn't attack the overall purpose of KiwiSaver. It adds to it. It strengthens it. Even if you want to use that money for, say, an overseas holiday, is that okay? Um, I love the idea of saving for for fun things and having great fun savings that you can access. Probably want to organise that by yourself <laughs> with your own bank. Just, you know, make a little bank account, label it Bali 2024, put something into it. And then, you know, every time you go to save, instead of it feeling like a sacrifice, that'll be a fun thing. I, I'm all about the fun savings too. There's also enrolling beneficiaries in KiwiSaver. Too, that, what do you think of that idea? Yeah, I think the the way the Retirement Commission looked at doing that um, was very considered because the problem with KiwiSaver is it, it's both the strength and the problem. KiwiSaver is loaded with all of these perks to convince you to stay in there. You get the employer match, you get the government tax break, and it's wonderful, and that's one of the reasons it helps people save up for the first home deposit. The problem is if someone truly genuinely can't afford to contribute to con- to KiwiSaver at all, then they are one of the people who most desperately needs it. And they are getting left out of all of those perks. They are missing out on something that could really make their later years so much better. And that really breaks my heart for them. So the idea of auto-enrolling beneficiaries at a small percentage, hopefully an amount that they wouldn't miss, is a good idea. As long as we still have, currently you can pause your KiwiSaver for whatever reason. And as long as that is still kept as a protection where they could say, no, really, I can't afford this, and they could pause it, no questions asked, that money isn't taken out, that's really important because then the standard is that you're in KiwiSaver and you're enrolled in it. You don't have to be thinking about going and doing that with everything else you're doing, but you can still choose to opt out. You just have to make that an active choice. I think that would help people. Any other ideas you have for uh, improving KiwiSaver? I think the thing is, with with KiwiSaver, it has been such a helpful scheme for people. I would love to see things like the employer contribution increased that would encourage people to save even more. You know, the fact that we save 3% of our salary, the standard amount is more like 10% what you should be aiming for. And so... um, We have a a very low bar here in New Zealand. You look over in Australia and they have 9% and your employer will match that too. So what, is that the average? Yeah. Oh, and we're only 3% here. Wow. Yeah, okay. yeah, we're very, very low. And look, I understand when they started KiwiSaver, they wanted to make sure it wasn't intimidating. They wanted to make sure that people didn't freak out about it. But it's now been 15 years. I think people are used to it. They've seen the benefits. They've seen how it can work for them. I think the time is right to encourage a bit more because KiwiSaver is fantastic. It has really, really helped people build their financial futures. Let's encourage even more. Let's have a fantastic retirement. Let's hit 65 and go to Bali. You know, <laughs> like this, this, let's have a really good time. Let's help people save for it because people do struggle. The great thing about KiwiSaver is it helps protect us from ourselves. The amount of people I talk to who say, I need to save more. I want to save more. And It's really, really hard. We do have to survive this complicated modern society. And this is why retirement funds around the world are difficult to get into. They're locked away because you need time for money to do its thing and build up. And then you can have a gorgeous little nest egg that helps get you through your golden years. The trick is you have to leave it alone. And so having this nest egg building up in a place that's hard to get to, not impossible, but hard, and then it sits there for decades... That has to be the core function of KiwiSaver. You've got to protect it from our impulse to raid it. I mean, there's already controversy sometimes about using it for a first home even, but that's at least building an asset for your future. 
putting your money into someone else's asset, I just think that should be totally off the off the table. Well, what are the other options that students can do? I mean, if they don't have enough money for a bond, mm. I mean, do you have to go to the bank of mum and dad? Do you have to go to instant finance and get one of those high interest loans? Well, yeah, I mean, the bank of mum and dad is one that gets suggested a lot. I'm always cautious of that because, of course, if you can get parental help, that's huge. Um, Not everyone has access to that um, for whatever reason. We already have things like there is a bond grant that anyone can apply for from work and income. You don't have to be a beneficiary to apply for it. So that already exists, and that's an interest-free loan you can get, and that would help some of the people in the worst situations. Um, In terms of... Other solutions? Well, if the National Party is so worried about this, maybe they should consider capping the amount you can charge for bond. Maybe they should consider making the bond grant scheme stronger. If you can stay at home or in a cheaper living situation for a bit longer so you can earn a bit more and save up, then great. But I'm always, I'm so cautious of those suggestions because everyone's situation is so different. But basically, Rating KiwiSaver, if if they really want to find a solution for this, and I understand that this can be a problem, I think the problem is actually to be addressed is our cooked housing market, not rating KiwiSaver, not making people's financial futures even worse for a quick sugar hit in the now and a massive impact later. That's it for today. I'm Tom Kitchen. The detail is supported by the Public Interest Journalism Fund. Today's episode was engineered by Phil Bench. Our producers are Alexia Russell and Bonnie Harrison. Thanks to Francis Cook, Mary Holm and the students at Auckland University. Hey, Kona. Cool